Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Mrs. Howergy. I'm Mrs. Howergy. Today we will be starting the book, Amelia Takes Command. Tomorrow is my first day as a fifth grader. I love that sentence. I'm a fifth grader. Leah has already planned what she's wearing and what's going to be in her lunch. I'm just planning on being excited and a little nervous. I wonder what my new teacher will be like. Will I like the other kids? Will they like me? Leah's not in my class, but I can still see her at lunch and recess. Well, now I know what my teacher is like, and I wish I didn't. Leah gets the good fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Reyes, or Mr. Reyes. He brought in cookies for the whole class on the first day. I get the witch, Miss Bus Biz Busby. The first thing she did was read all these rules to us. She's not like my old teacher at all. A whole year with her, fifth grade is ruined. I don't even like the classroom. There are boxes of junk blocking the bookshelf, bits of wood, wire, and nails. It looks like Cleo's room in here. Only with Cleo, the mess is made of soda cans, empty nail polish bottles, pretzels, and chip crumbs, and dirty socks. What's all this stuff for anyway? I bet Mrs. Busby is going to build some kind of torture device. It's torture enough just going to school. We never get to do anything fun. Plus, it's hard not having Leah in the same class. None of the other kids none of the other kids is nice to me. Well, Jacqueline is a little friendly, but I can tell she really likes Susie. She's just polite to me. This year is the worst. Mrs. Busby says she's sorry to block the bookshelves, but she's collecting things for our first science project. I finally get the get to fifth grade and it's like I'm back in kindergarten hammering nails into wood and calling it sculptures. All that junk turned out to be not so junky. We put it all together and made a telegraph. It was so cool. I wrote to Nadia and drew her a picture so she can make her own. I wish we could tap out messages to each other but I don't have long enough to write. It would have been a perfect day but at recess Leah, Leah didn't play with me. She was too busy jumping rope with Gwen some girl in her class. I looked for someone I could jump rope with, but everyone already had a friend, except Hillary. She was swinging on the bars, and I didn't want to do that. Leah won't walk to school with me anymore. She walks with Gwen instead. Just when I start to like school, something rotten happens. I really need a friend now, a close by friend, not a far away friend like Nadia. I can't believe I ever thought Hillary might be friendly. She's mean, mean, mean. She says I look like a doofus because I don't wear knee socks and I have a stupid haircut. What's wrong with my hair? And why does it matter what kind of socks I wear? But once she said it, everyone else started believing it. Lucy and Matilda couldn't play four score with me. And when I sat down next to Susie at lunch, she changed places. It was awful. I knew this would be the worst year of my life. Everyone says you should just ignore teasing and it will go away, but it's not going away. I try to pretend I'm a stone when Hillary talks to me, but inside I feel like I'm crumbling. Why doesn't Leah like me anymore either? Have I changed somehow? Do I have B.O.? I called Leah on the phone and asked what's wrong. She said nothing's wrong. She still likes me, but she's so busy with Gwen. She doesn't have time for two friends. Of course she picks the person in the same class as her, and Gwen wears knee-high socks. Maybe what I need is a good luck charm. We started the next science project today, rockets. Real ones, not just models. We're going to have a big launch day when we're done and see whose flies the best. We have to work with a partner, and I held my breath hoping, hoping, hoping Hillary would not be my partner. She's not, she's Seth partners. What a relief. Carly is my partner. She likes science as much as I do and I saw she had a notebook in her desk. It looks like mine. Today Hillary said my lunch looked gross. Now she's insulting my food. She always looked for something mean to say. Carly says not to pay attention to Hillary. She's just like that. Carly was in her class last year and Susie was the one Hillary teased then. I'm just the lucky kid this year. When Hillary kicked the back of my chair, Carly passed me this note. Just pretend Hillary is a giant cockroach, then you wouldn't care what she says or does. 
At recess, Carly and Maya taught me how to jump double dutch. I love it. And it's one game where you need three people instead of just two. So I didn't care when Hillary said I jumped like an elephant. Well, not much, because Carly invited me over to her house after school, and she didn't invite Hillary, so there. Carly has two big brothers, and they're really nice to her. I'd trade Cleo for either one of them in a second. They brought us soda and chips in her room. If I invited Carly to my house, Cleo would steal snacks from us, not offer them to us. I like Carly a lot, but I don't want to like her too much, because what if she starts liking someone else better, like Leah did? Cle uh, Carly made me a friendship bracelet like this. I told her about Leah, and she says she's not like that. I thought the worst was over. When hi with Hillary, but it's not. Today she passed me a note that was so mean I don't want to write down what it said. Why does she work so hard to make me cry? What did I do to her? Mom asked why I'm always cranky now. What's going on? I told her about Hillary's note, but I didn't tell her what it said. She hugged me and pulled me into her lap, even though I'm too big for that anymore. She said kids can be mean. I already knew that. Then she told me a story about Grandma Sarah I'd never heard before. I want to write it down before I forget it. Grandma's story. When Grandma was a little kid, it was the Depression, which was the time when nobody in the country had much money because the banks all failed. They couldn't give people their savings back. That can't happen anymore, but it could then, and it was terrible. She was the oldest of four girls, and it was really hard for her parents to scrape together money to feed the family. Her father, my great-grandfather, was an engineer, not the train kind, the building kind. He made bridges before the Depression, but he... But he lost his job since nobody had, any, had money to pay for building anymore, and the only work he could get was being a janitor in a big office building. He wasn't paid very much, but at least things were very cheap then. Chicken was 29 cents a pound and bread was 10 cents a loaf. One day, Grandma was sent to the store to buy some bread for bread, bread soup because that was all they could afford for dinner that night. Her mother was sick in bed that day, so Grandma had to go. She held that dime tight, 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 but on the way, a mean boy saw her. He knew she had a coin in her fist. He followed her and started to call her names. Then he blocked her way and wouldn't let her go any farther. Grandma was scared and ready to cry. She wanted to throw the money at the boy and then run away. But then she thought of how mad her mom would be and how sad her sisters would be with no dinner. The more she thought, the madder she got until she was so mad at this boy. How dare you do this to us that she just blew up. Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? You let me pass by now. She yelled so loud, people on the street turned to stare, and that mean boy got so scared, he was the one to run away. And Grandma said it was the best dinner she'd had in a long time, even if it was only soup. The end. Mom and Grandma was, Mom and Grandma was a lot like me. Mom said Grandma was a lot like me. She even kept a notebook, but she called it a diary. I asked Mom if I could read it, but she's not sure where it is. It's definitely not in our house. It's definitely not in our house somewhere, but she thinks Uncle Frank has it. I'm going to write him and ask. It's cool to think that Grandma wrote and drew things just like me. I wonder if she stuck things in her journal like I do. Did she write stories too? Once there was this mean girl, I had no one who no one liked. She got no presents on her birthday because even her parents hated her, and she had no brothers or sisters because she was so horrible her parents didn't want to risk having another kid like her. And this is where we'll stop for today. Please join me tomorrow to finish this book. Please like the video and subscribe below. Bye-bye.